are the Muppets. Hello. 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 And these are our biggest fans. Yeah! <laughs> you excited for our big trip to LA? There's somebody coming. Yeah, excuse me. Good grief. It's... It, it's always with a sense of trepidation that you approach a sequel after this many years or a film after this many years involving icons like the Muppets. It is with enormous relief that I can say, <laughs> oh my God, did you get it right? <laughs> that is very kind of you, sir. Thank you. It's um, you, the respect and the admiration for the characters and for the world that was created, and especially the show and the original films, is palpable in this. How hard is it to recreate something that lives in your memory so so deeply. Well, it's a, it's 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 not. It's a question for me. I'm I've always been a huge fan, and I think that well, that obviously lends knowledge because you you care about something, and so you really want to do it justice. So for me, I've watched my business since I was five in England, you know, for a long time, and so it's something that can't help but influence you on a number of levels, but principally in terms of your sense of humour. I think it's formed at a very early age. You, what you find funny at five, you probably find funny at 45. It's just the way it is. And coming off Flight of the Concords, which is a show which is a similarly innocent show, which is music and comedy, and has a very great sense of positivity about it, I felt Muppets and Concords weren't that dissimilar. So it felt to me like I was in a good position to be able to do this justice. And I thought that, you know, I, I was aware that the Muppets are the, kind of like the na a national treasure. But at the same time, I really felt that I knew what I was going to do with it. And I was very confident about the tone and the, and the attack I was going to take. The Muppets are very well-established characters. Mm -hmm. What sort of direction do you give a Muppet <laughs> to get what you're looking for? Well, you have to remember, of course, they're playing characters to a degree in the movie. Do, you know, not directing, directing actors. You give them notes as to how you feel the scene should be working, and they are very happy to adapt to that. But you are also aware they have a history. So at the same time, when you write the scenes, and Nick and Jason were writing the scenes, they were quite true to that. So I felt that there was nothing in it they wouldn't necessarily do themselves, but at the same time, there's nothing that, it, that would hurt the script itself. So. So often in family films now, there are jokes that are hidden in family films where I feel uncomfortable explaining them mm -hmm. afterwards or mm -hmm. I have to dodge the issue. Mm -hmm. You guys don't have any of that. I don't think we needed it. It's not necessary. Muppets are funny enough anyway. You don't have to go there. You know what I mean? And even though we have you know, our backgrounds to a degree, we're all, you know, Jace, Nick and, my, and myself are parents, and so we kind of understand where you're coming from with that. And one of the joys of the Muppets is the innocence of the Muppets, and I think the world needs more innocence in it, and I think in a way that we can all be cynical for a very long time. And I want to maintain innocence for as long as possible, and I think that one of the themes of this movie, as when Chris Cooper stands up and says, you guys are irrelevant, you know, you've, everyone's forgotten about you, the world is a cynical place, it's moved on. I think that's so sad, and I really want the Muppets to be part of my children's world in a way that they are a positive message, and they really believe in each other. And they are individually flawed, but they work together as a group, you know, and it's really important. I've always been a fan of the way the Muppets have incorporated music. And in this film, you have a great SAG Kermit song. And yes. I think that, that that is, to me, it says so much about your understanding of the, the characters. Thank you. Kermit songs always break your heart a little bit. Of course. And uh, and I think this is a really beautifully staged one. Thank you. Well, I wanted to find Kermit in a place you wouldn't necessarily recognize him. If you knew him from before, it's a very un, it's a very unusual to find Kermit in this place, whereby he's kind of on his own a little bit, and he has a sort of slight tinge of wistfulness to me, where you haven't really seen before. And so I thought, well, this is going to be Kermit explaining to other people, who even people who don't know the Muppets, what happened, to a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you know the show and know the Muppets, you kind of identify with it, you kind of understand what he's talking about. But if you have no idea what he's talking about, you kind of introduce them in a very subtle, gentle way, without going, here they are, this is them. He's sort of singing about his own memory of them, which is a really nice way of introducing who they are. And I thought, what a better way than old pictures, you know, p memories, like a photograph album almost, but in oil painting. So that's kind of how it came about. You knocked that out of the park, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much for taking the time to sit My down pleasure. today. My pleasure. Thank you, man. Nice to meet you. The Muppets.